Uh, for those of you that were not here this morning, I just want to give you a brief introduction uh, for Pastor Ted Spear, just to get, let you get to know him a little bit. Uh, Pastor Spear uh, grew up going to church, but he was not saved until he was 20 years old. Uh, he got his Bachelor's of Science degree in Animal Science from Virginia Tech in 1994. He at that time then enrolled in Hiles Anderson College. He graduated in 2000 with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Pastoral Theology. Uh, he got married uh, uh, to his wife Elizabeth in July of 1997. Uh, Pastor Ted Spear then became a teacher at Hiles Anderson College. In 2002, he also became the Assistant Director of the Chapel Ministry of First Baptist Church of Hammond. Uh, while serving as an Assistant Ministry Director, he pastored his own church in Chicago, Illinois. In 2006, he became an assistant pastor of the First Baptist Church, serving as the chapel ministry director. In this ministry, he was the overseer of five inner city churches. In 2009, the Spear family moved to Ghana, and Pastor Spear became the senior pastor of Fundamental Baptist Church International and president of Hollis Anderson College of West Africa. In 2011, Pastor Spear was awarded an honorary doctorate of, huma of humanities from his alma mater, Hollis Anderson College. Mrs. Spear faithfully serves as the church pianist, Sunday school teacher of the Life Builders Ladies Class, and a nursery worker. God has blessed them with five children, Kimberly, James, Rachel, Grace, and Michael. Kimberly is serving with her husband at Bethel Baptist Church in the state of Washington. James and Rachel are currently attending Hollis Anderson uh, College. Grace will join them in the fall. And what I'm told here is Michael is living his best life as the baby of the family and the only child at home while helping throughout the ministries in Ghana. So that gives you a uh, brief uh, look and an introduction to uh, Pastor Ted Spear. Uh, they are going to have a video, and then their family's going to sing, and then he is going to preach for us this evening. Would you like to say anything or just go straight to the video? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for coming back to Sunday Evening Church. It's a, it's a joy to be here. Uh, like I said this morning, your church has such a great spirit. It's uplifting and wonderful. Um, I saw someone, you had a card there, you're praying for a missionary. And um, let me encourage you, the Bible says in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, Paul, as he often does, he is speaking here and he says, um, hold on a minute, I think I'm trying to find my place. He says, we give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Um, I would encourage you in your Christian life not just to pray for people, but let people know that you're praying for them. Um, and I'm, I'm just saying this, I'm not saying this for personal reasons, but um, missionaries send out missionary updates. We do it monthly. Um, I only have about, I have three people, two people that routinely respond to those updates. Um, and one of them has been a huge blessing to me. There's a lady, she oversees her missionary circle, if you will, in her home church in Tennessee. And she she kind of reaches out to me every month and she's read my updates, she has something to comment on it. And uh, not asking me for anything, not not putting a burden on me, but just letting me know that they're supporting me. So I would encourage you to get in contact with the person you're praying for. Let's, let's let them know, hey, I'm praying for you. It, it makes a difference. Um, all right, we're going to show you a video. And Brother Ryan, if I ask you to pause it, can you pause it for me? I want to make a few comments um, during the video. Thank you. Our family has just completed 15 years of service to Ghana, West Africa. We were so happy to be honored recently by our church on this occasion. Our people lined the sidewalks and gave us a parade walk from my office to the church building. They shared gifts and spoke many kind words to us. And we are thrilled to be a part of what God has done here. Our team has established a vibrant local church that enjoys 10 acres of beautiful prime real estate here in Kamasi. 
This property serves as a headquarters for our Bible college, Christian school, TV ministry, radio ministry, church planting ministry, and many other ministries. It has been our honor and privilege to serve as missionaries in Ghana and West Africa, and we're committed to many more years of service. Personal soul winning is a great emphasis in our ministry. Here are some pictures of some of our most recent converts. What a joy to meet these people and see them trust Christ and begin attending church. Ghana remains a very fertile place for sharing the gospel. The people are very open to hear the truth of God's word. This is Elizabeth with one of her recent converts. Recently, while out soul winning, this lady asked Elizabeth to come and share the word of God with her. She gladly listened and took the next step and started attending church. It's not enough just to give the gospel. Our ministry is very much focused on discipling converts and developing leaders and sending them out. In 2023, we helped to start two new churches in Ghana. Pastor Otri Bwachi and family established the Fundamental Baptist Church of Afinso, and this ministry has already sent a student to our Bible college for training. In addition, Pastor Christian Gafachi and family established the Fundamental Baptist Church of Saga Kope, and that ministry is also thriving. Our graduate David Brooks and his family have recently established a church in the country of Sierra Leone. Pray for this new ministry as they currently meet under a tree. They have about 150 people attending church. We hope to be able to help them with a the building and to see that ministry progress. Our graduate George Minion has trained and sent a pastor to establish a church in Côte d'Ivoire. And we're very excited about a new ministry in this very needy country. We're very happy at the number of new college students that we've been able to influence over the last two years. We presently have students from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Liberia, Togo, and Ghana enrolled in our Bible college. We've reached our capacity in our dormitories and we're praying for God's provision to build bigger. I'm happy to report to you that our orphan ministry is growing and thriving. Currently, our orphans are staying in this 2,500 square foot home. There are 77 people living in this house with only three bath areas and three toilets. But I'm happy to report that money has been raised and promised to build a school facility and dormitories for our orphans and staff. You see the construction that is ongoing here in this video. We expect by the end of the year to be finished with the dormitories as well as the school building. We praise God for His provision. Our orphanage does need help for monthly feeding and supplies for the children. If you'd like to help, then please contact me. Thank you for watching and thank you for your prayers and financial support for our ministry here in Ghana, West Africa. God bless you. So, in the video, I said 77 people. In my last report, there was 80 people living in that 2,500 square foot house. Amen. How big is your house? Can you imagine living in a house with 80 people? Uh, and they're happy. They're happy. They're happy. But we're glad God has provided. God has given us, um, I've lost count, but he's given us well more than $300,000 to build a school and orphanage. And we'll be done with that by the end of the year. And I'm very excited about that. And that'll allow us to, to take in a lot more children. Amen. All right. Um, we're going to do something tonight just to, for Emma and Ms. Weaver. Emma's from Liberia, and uh, we were singing a song with her out there this afternoon. Um, the Lib we have quite a few Liberians in our church, and they've influenced our ministry and church. And They sing a particular song that I like, and we sing it in our church, and we're going to sing it with you tonight. Amen. It's a simple song, all right, but you're going to have to clap your hands. Okay, now we're not going to get into any kind of, you know, ungodly beats or nothing, but... But you're going to have to clap your hands with me. You'll catch on to this song. So, family, you're going to have to help me. Ms. Emma, you're going to have to help me over there with a loud voice. Amen. 
But we're going to sing a song called What the Lord Has Done for Me. All right? So now don't sit there and, 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 and quiet enough on me. Okay? You know, in, in Africa, people are not embarrassed about spiritual things. I wish we... I wish we could learn that in America, amen? All right, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell at all. It goes like this. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell at all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell at all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell at all. He saved me and washed my sins away. One more time. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed my sins away. So I will sing, oh, I will sing, oh, I will sing. Praise the Lord, oh, I will sing, oh, I will sing, oh, I will sing. sing. Now, some of you got the hallelujah part. I can kind of hear you. Rest some more of y'all got to jump in there. I mean, so I go, oh, I will sing hallelujah. All right, you got it? Let's try it. Oh, I will sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you got it? Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll do the second. Go. Uh, he has done so much, so much for me. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed my sins away. So I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Praise. The Lord, you gotta, you gotta get with me. Oh, I will sing, praise the Lord. All right, let's try it again. Come on, I can't hear y'all over there. You Africans aren't helping me. All right, let's do it. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. I can't hear you. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much, so much, so much. I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed my sins away. So I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Praise the Lord. Oh, I will clap. Hallelujah. Oh, I will clap. Hallelujah. Oh, I will clap, praise the Lord. Oh, I will wave, hallelujah. Oh, I will wave, hallelujah. Oh, I will wave, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish you could hear my African friends sing that, boy. Yeah. Uh, take the roof off. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to catch my breath. And, <laughs> and then my family's going to sing for us. So y'all come on up. We're going to sing a song. The um, name of this song is Glad I Laid Down My Life. This was written by Lindsay Osgood, one of the missionaries on our mission team. She served there for 18 years. Man chose to sin, the plan had 
to change, a sacrifice must be made. The father turned to the son and looked in his eyes. Would you give up your heavenly home, your robe and crown, your kingly throne? And he said, I will lay down my life. I'll pay any price. I will be the sacrifice. Though the way seems so hard and the price seems so great, I will go, I will lay down my life. And the Father pleads today, the harvest is so great, a sacrifice must be made. And just as I asked my son, I'm turning now to you. Would you give up your hopes and dreams, your lifelong plans, your everything? Will you say I will lay down my life? I'll pay any price. I will make a sacrifice. Though the way seems so hard and the price seems so great, I will go, I will lay down my life. And on that day when all heaven and mankind stand before God's Son and watch Him glorify, tears of joy will be streaming down my face if I know that I gave my Lord first place I'm so glad that I laid down my life I thought that I was making a sacrifice but as I look into his face the pain is all erased I'm so glad, glad I laid down my life. If I could do it all again, I'd still give up my plans. I'm so glad, glad I laid down my Turn with me to Psalm 119. You folks are a pleasure to preach to. Appreciate all the amens. Appreciate the participation. Oh, I need to turn this on. (coughs) He's on the ball, boy. (coughs) Thank you, Brother Ryan. I'll take all y'all back to Africa with me. <laughs> I'll have to put you in the luggage, though. <laughs> that stuck you in the duffel bag, Brother Ward. <clears throat> Pay an overcharge fee, too. Over, over. Psalm 119, verse 83. Are you there? It says, for I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet will not forget thy statutes. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this assembly of people here tonight, these believers. Thank you for their making time for the 
assembling of ourselves together. Thank you that we have a Bible to preach. And I pray you encourage us tonight through your word. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So there's an expression here that when I was studying Psalm 119, I said, just a bottle in the smoke. You know, what is that? And uh, as I researched what that, or tried to find out what that meant, has anybody got a bottle in here? Water bottle? Anybody got a water bottle here? Oh, that, is that against the rules? Oh, so if somebody raised it up, they'd get in trouble. Oh, right here. Messinos have a water bottle. It, it was tucked away, lids on tight. So, when we often think of a bottle, we think of something like this. This happens to be a plastic bottle. Uh, most likely, you probably think of a glass bottle. Okay. But this bottle here, can I, can I have this? No, I'm just, this uh, a bottle here in, in these biblical times was made not out of glass, not out of, obviously not out of plastic, but was made out of uh, animal skin, leather. And it held, uh, it held liquids and dry goods. And what the people would do, they, they lived in very modest uh, homes. And they would hang their leathern bottles up. And much like maybe the American Indian or many of the villages in Africa where we visit today, they, have to, they will make fires in their dwellings. And the smoke would rise up. And a lot of them didn't have, you know, they didn't have a setup like with a fireplace and a chimney where all the smoke went out. And a lot of times their, their dwellings would be filled with smoke. And these bottles, as they hang, hung in the house, they would get stained with the blackened smoke. And they'd eventually go from looking like a leathern bottle to this blackened bottle. In the psalmist here, he's saying that, he says, I, have, I am become like a bottle in the smoke. Well, what is he saying? Well, what does smoke do to a person? It blurs your vision. How many of you have ever got, gotten smoke in your eyes? Blurs your vision? It <coughs> chokes off your airways. It it, it stinks up your clothes. You've been around a fire. Someone says, man, you stink. you got smoke all over you, right? So when, a, when someone's in the smoke, they're, they're being influenced by the smoke. They're being uh, challenged by the smoke. And he is saying, I'm like a smoke in the I'm like a bottle in the smoke. Now, what was he saying? Let's go back, look in verse 1, look verse 81. I want to go through here, and I'm going to just show you some phrases to help you get a more fuller picture of the mind and heart of the psalmist here. In verse 81, read it with me. He says, For my soul fainteth for thy salvation. You see that? My soul fainteth for thy salvation. Now, let me, put a, let me put a little plug in here for my book. Amen. It's not talking about being born again. And salvation in the Bible means deliverance. He's going through a difficult time. He wants deliverance, and he's longing for it. And the Bible says his soul fainteth for salvation. Look in verse 82, the first three words. Mine eyes, what? Fail. Look at the end of that verse. When wilt thou comfort me? When wilt thou comfort me? Many of you have been in a place like this in your life, where you're going through a trial, where your vision is blurred, where you're... You're losing air, and you're fainting for salvation, and you're wondering when God will comfort you. Look in verse 84, at the end of the verse. 
He says, when wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? He had enemies. People are against him. And this is a human being just like you and I. No, he's obviously spiritual. He's challenged by the adversity that the enemy brings. And he wonders when, when, God, are you going to even the score here? Amen. Vengeance is of the Lord. God, when are you going to do your thing and execute judgment? Look at verse 85. The proud have digged pits for me. Man, my, my, I'm like a bottle in the smoke. They're after me. They're digging pits. They're setting traps for me. They pursue me every day. They're after me. Look in verse 86. In the middle of the verse, it says, They persecute me, what? Wrongfully. They persecute me wrongfully. You know, in life, there's different types of suffering we go through. And there's really two main categories of suffering. There's suffering we bring into our own lives because of our sin and stupidity. And then there's the suffering that God allows in our life, that that life brings us, that God brings us, or that our enemy brings us, that God allows. And this man is saying, God, I'm innocent. They persecute me wrongfully. You ever been there in life where you thought, I don't deserve this. Why is this happening? I'm like a bottle in the smoke. I can't see clearly, God. My enemies are after me. They're digging pits for me. I can't see very clearly. I'm going to fall in one of them. When are you going to execute judgment? When are you going to come through, God? Look at verse 87. They had almost consumed me upon earth. Now, I, obviously, I just selected certain phrases to show you because I'm trying to show you the mental and emotional state of the psalmist here. But he says much more here. And he says a lot of powerful things. We're going to go back and look at some of the other statements that he makes here. But let me just say, there are adversaries in life. Amen? The Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. There's a reason he told us, because we have we have an enemy, the devil and all that, that represent him. Times are tough. Life's not a life's not meant to be an easy place. Okay? People people who get it in their mind and heart that life's supposed to be about comfort, uh, they don't do well in life. Well, they may do well in the eyes of the world, but they don't do well in God's economy. Because God says we're to be pilgrims passing through. We're left here for a purpose. And that purpose is to endure for Him. To bring glory and honor for Him. Amen. The Bible says, Blessed are ye when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake. So there are adversaries. Times can be tough. Times can be difficult. And suffering does come in this life. In one way, one shape, or another. We don't all suffer the same. I mean, I know I certainly have not suffered like other people. Some people have to endure much more suffering than others. But some type of suffering, some type of challenge, some difficulty comes to all. And, boy, the Bible is filled with passages that minister to us in this area of suffering and adversity. Life brings difficult times to all. And sometimes life will blur our vision and life becomes difficult. But I say to you, there's always hope. Amen? I want to give you four thoughts tonight from this passage of what we need to do to be encouraged when the smoke of life is troubling us because it will trouble us. The first thing I want you to to notice is again in verse 83. He said, For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not what? Forget thy statutes. 
There's a formula here for us. Man, I'm going through a difficult time, but I do not forget thy statutes. Point number one, don't forget God's Word. If we want to make it through the suffering and come out of the suffering, having glorified God, amen, Amen. then we need to not forget God's Word. Look in verse 81. My soul fainted for thy salvation, but I what? Hope in thy what? Word. In thy word. Hey, God, I'm going through a tough time. But I'll tell you what I'm I'm not going to do is I'm not going to forget your commandments. I'm not going to forget your stat. I'm not going to forget what you have said. Amen. It's time to run in my mind to that place. Run to that place where God has spoken to me, where God has given me what I need to get through the difficult time, to get through the smoke of life. Never be shocked or surprised that life brings trials and affliction. Never. Never. And when it comes, forget not that God's Word is true. Men will fail you, but God's Word never. And I'll point out those words the psalmist said, but I hope. Yeah. <laughs> God, I, I'm like a smoke. I'm like a smoke. I'm like a bottle in the smoke. I'm wondering when you're going to execute judgment. They're, they're digging pits for me, but I hope. Amen. But I hope. Amen. I love the way God gives us the testimonies of people in the Bible, and He allows us to hear and see all that they went through and all that they thought. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that we could relate to it. The Bible says in Psalm 71, 14, it says this, But I will hope continually and will yet praise Thee more and more. I will hope continually. We can hope continually because we have God's Word. We have God's promises, and it is true. Amen? The judgments of the Lord are true, amen, and righteous altogether. Amen? We can have hope because of God's Word. The Bible says in Romans 8, look in Romans 8. You know, why would a psalmist say, if everything always went well for him and he never had trouble, then why would, he, why would he even make a statement that I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more? Why would he say, but I will hope continually? Because life's not about an uh, easy street. Amen. Life's, life's representing Christ through the trials. Amen. Romans 8, 24, it says, for we're saved by what? But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why why doth he yet hope for? Verse 25, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Now look, folks, it's another case where this salvation is not talking about being born again. Okay? This is the Christian life. In Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, all deal with the Christian life. It does not deal with justification. Justification is chapter 3 and 4. Sanctification is the subject of chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. The Christian life. And God is telling us that we're saved by hope. We're delivered by hope. As you walk in this life, as you serve God in this world, and you go through the trials for God, you're delivered from that trial through hope. It is hope in your heart that delivers you and allows you to get through the smoke of life. Hope is a positive expectation. We don't use that word rightly in our vernacular language. We say, well, I hope that happens, and I I hope you get that, and I hope you... We use it kind of like for I wish, but in the Bible, hope means you you believe something's going to happen. Hope is the... It is the emotion you experience because you believe something's going to take place. Amen? 
And, and we can hope continually because we forget not God's Word. And, and, and our hope can be our deliverance. Our hope can be that safe place that we run to. Amen? In our minds and heart is hope. The Bible says in Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. I praise God that no matter what comes in this life, I can rejoice because there is hope. And the reason there is hope is because there is truth. And God has revealed that truth to us in His Word and made promises to you and I. And that can give us this thing we call hope. Rejoicing in hope. Verse, uh, Romans 12, 12. You want to turn it over there. Rejoicing in hope. What's the next three words? Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Patient in tribulation. What is patience? It's enduring. Amen? Amen? Patience is bearing up under the burden and continuing. Patience is continuing in the trial. And as we rejoice in God's promises, in hope, we can be patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Amen? Look in Romans 15.4. Romans 15.4. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. So here we are tonight. We're reading the things which were written aforetime. The Old Testament. We're reading from the prophets. We're reading in the book of Psalms. And he's telling us I'm like a smoke in the bottle. Bottle in the smoke. I keep getting them backwards. <laughs> That's a talent I have. I'm mixing things up. Man. He's like a bottle in the smoke, but yet he hopes Amen. in God's Word. And we see it here in Romans 15, 4. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. We have reason to hope. I, I preach a, I preach a, I preach a sermon, and I um, often talk about the idea that we find hope in the past, we find hope in the present, we find hope in the future. Amen. I said it the other day in a different sermon, but the same idea that in life, the past and the future are to be a compass that guides your present. We are to look back in life. That's what most of the Bible is. It's a history book. And we look back in history and we, we read about David. We read about Moses and we read about Joshua and we read about Esther and we read about Ruth and we read about all these people and we find hope in what God did for them. And that's what Romans 15 and 4 is telling us. These things were written that you would learn and that you would have hope. And then the New Testament, much of it, and much of the Old Testament is prophecy. So we have a history book that tells us what has been, and we have a prophetic book that tells us what will be. And in what will be, we know the end. There's a new heaven and a new earth. Amen? There's a judgment seat of Christ. Amen? And God will judge us according to our works. The Bible says that, right? We get into heaven by faith but we get rewarded in heaven by what we did for Christ on this earth. And so we only find hope in that when we're serving Christ. <laughs> when we set Christ aside, we set hope aside. Because when we set Christ aside, if we're seeing clearly the future ain't that bright. Because we've got to face God one day. And God said we're to face Him and we're to live in such a way that when we face Him, we won't be ashamed. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. Amen? So we have a reason to hope. We look in the past, we have a reason to hope. 
God did split the Red Sea. I, I, I believe that. And you can find the proof of it. God did come down on Mount Sinai. The blackened mountain is there. The evidence is there. He did bring water out of a rock. Amen. He did use a little boy to slay Goliath. Well, not a little boy. Teenager, amen. He's, he's probably quite the man, amen. God came through for people in the past. He's come through in my life. We sing that song, What the Lord Has Done for Me. Man, I, I, man, I, I, I sing that with passion because God's done things for me. He saved me and He washed my sins away. I believe that. And I find hope in that. And that helps me when the smoke of life is blurring my vision. Amen. And I find hope in the present because we have God access to God's presence. God has not just said to us, read about me in the past and believe in what I've told you, but He said, I am an ever-present help in the time of need. The Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. He's an ever-present help. He says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. He promises of that. So whether it's past, whether it's present, whether it's the future, we can find hope. So though life sometimes is filled with smoke and trials and difficulties and disappointments, we can find hope if we forget not God's Word. The Christian life is built on what God has said. Okay? The foundation of the Christian life is faith. For faith in what? Faith in what God has said. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. What does that mean? Well, hearing means to understand. So it means if you want to grow your faith, you've got to understand God's Word. The more you understand of God's Word, the more you walk in God's Word, the stronger your faith will be, the stronger your faith will be. The more you know Him, the more you know Him, the more hope you have, and you will find rejoicing, though your eyes could be blurry from the smoke of life. Hallelujah. The second thing I want you to see is in verse 86. Psalm 119, verse 86. He says, For all thy commandments are what? Faithful. For all thy commandments are faithful. Well, why are God's commandments faithful? Because God is faithful. What does the Bible tell us, tell us in Hebrews 10, 23? Turn there. Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Hold fast the profession of faith. Look. I'm not holding fast on my my eternal security. I'm not holding fast to that. God's got that. But I'm to profess Christ. I'm to profess my faith. And i got to hold fast to that without wavering. My job is to represent Christ. My job is to profess Christ. My job is to show Christ to this world. And God says, hold fast to that. And then look at the end of the verse. He says... Um, for He is what? Faithful that promised. Amen? God is faithful. If you look in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You don't have to turn there. He says this, Faithful is He that calleth you who also will do it. God is faithful. Amen? Amen? And, and we can find joy and, and peace yes. yeah. in the idea that God is faithful. Yeah. And God's Word 
magnifies Him. Amen. The theme of this book is to God be the glory. Don't ever forget that. That's the theme of this book, to God be the glory. The main, the central figure of the Bible is Christ, but the theme of the Bible is to God be the glory. That God is faithful. God is worthy. Amen. Um, God's word will remind you that He is faithful. So as we don't, as we don't forget His statutes, and we get into His statutes, they remind us of His faithfulness. They remind us that He has said in John fourteen. What does it say in John fourteen? Who knows that verse? Let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many. If it were not so, I would have. Amen? We get into God's Word, and it gives us verses like that. And in it, we find hope, and we find that God is faithful. You know, to be faithful, that's a word we often... I think we kind of think of it as meaning like predictable or dependable, but faithful is much more than that. The idea of faithfulness, especially in the Old Testament, is the idea of goodness. God is not, He is faithful to be good. God is good. I said God is good. No matter what happens in life, God is is good. We as believers never have an excuse to turn from God. We never have a good reason to quit on God because God is good. We keep our eyes on God, not man. We serve with each other. We love each other. We pray for each other. But when you fall, my eyes are on God. God is faithful. Amen? Don't lose faith in God's goodness. Because God is good. That's one of the really basic doctrines of Christianity. Is that God is good. you got to believe that if you're going to serve God. you got to believe God is good. It is. And you may not, well, certainly you should experience God's goodness in this life, but probably most of His goodness you're going to experience in the future. You've got to believe that. You've got to take Him at His word. The third thing I want you to see from these, this passage concerning the troubles of life, the trials of life, number one, don't forget God's word. Number two, remember that God is faithful. Number three, look in verse 88. He says, we're in Psalm 119, verse 88. He says, quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. The third point tonight is keep your integrity. Keep your integrity. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. We remember God's word. That's where everything begins with God's word. That's where everything in Christian life begins with what God has said. That's why we have vain worship in this world. Because people don't know the book. So their worship becomes vain because they don't worship according to knowledge. We get into God's Word and and we not only see that God is faithful, but we see God has requirements. We see God has expectations. We see God expects us to live up to a certain standard. And we need to keep our integrity. And when the trials of life come, we're often tempted to go astray, to quit on God. And the psalmist here, I believe, through the Spirit of God, is preaching us, keep your integrity. Amen. When trials come, do right. Amen. 
The temptation is to compromise. The temptation is to go astray. But we must do right. Amen? The fourth thing, the last thing I want you to see from this passage is also in verse 88. Notice the first two words, quicken me. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. The trials of life, the challenges of life should drive us closer to God. And what I love about this verse is God can be found. Amen. Amen. God will get close to us. Um, And the psalmist here, he's acknowledging that he has something to keep. He has to keep the testimony of God's mouth. But then he says, quicken me. The idea here is God saying, look, I've given you something to do, but I'll do it with you. Amen. I'll go with you. I will quicken you. Amen. To quicken someone is to is to give them vigor. Right. It's 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 get to give them life. To quicken is to give strength. Right. Yeah. And you know what? When you go through tough times, any time in the Christian life, especially when you go through a challenge, it's okay to cry out to God. Amen. It's okay to shed tears to God. It's okay to ask God for His help. It's okay to say, God, quicken me. Amen? We don't have to be strong with God. We can be weak. We can fall in His presence and let Him know how weak we are and that we need Him and we need Him to quicken us. We need His blessing. We need His wisdom. We need only what He can give us. God is there for us. Amen. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Hey, God, I haven't forgot your commandments. God, these enemies made a digging pits for me, but I haven't forgot your commandments. God, I can't see very good. Like a bottle in the smoke. I feel like Somebody's trying to choke my life out. But God, I haven't forgotten your word. And you know what, God? In your word, you know what I found? I found hope. And I found a reminder that you're faithful. And God, I found that I, there's, I got a job to do. And God, I'm going to keep my integrity. God, I need your help. God, I can't do it without you. You've got to help me, God. You've got to come through, God. I need you. Amen? God wants to be needed. God wants to be worshipped. He wants to be acknowledged for His greatness and who He is. He wants His Word to be magnified. He wants you to keep your integrity, but He's okay with your tears. He's okay with your weakness. He is God, and we are but flesh. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. The trials of life, the challenges of life should drive us closer to God. God can help you. Cry out to Him and wait on Him. I love Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. And He shall strengthen thine heart. Amen? Amen. Get into God's Word. Don't forget it. Recognize His greatness. Recognize His expectations. Find hope in it. And when you still got a broken heart and the room is still smoky, cry out to God and say, God, quicken me. Quicken me. 
Amen. Amen. It's not my duty to address the challenges of this church, but I will acknowledge that I understand you're going through challenges. Thank you for being in church today. Thank you for being where you're supposed to be. And you be here in the midweek service, and you be here next Sunday. You be in your place. Because God's not done with Anchor Baptist Church. Anchor Baptist Church has been a blessing to our ministry. We're a large ministry. But this church has been a huge blessing to us. And I thank God for Brother Munson, Brother Seeley, and Brother Messino, and Brother Ward over here. They, they came to visit us, and we've been blessed since they, ever since they left. We, we've not forgotten you because you continue to minister to us, continue to help us. God needs you. I don't, I don't like it when people say God don't need you. I, I get it. I understand that God is omnipotent. I understand what they mean. But I also understand that I'm important to God. And I also understand that God has established that to do His work, He's going to do it with us. And God does need you. You are important to God. And don't be so childish to think in life that you're not going to have to deal with the smoke of life. I don't know what you're going through. As a body, as a group, you're dealing with something as a church. But as individuals, all of you face challenges that maybe none of the rest of us know about. Okay? God is there for you. Amen? That's why I like reading the Psalms. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's uplifted, man. It's uplifted. God is good. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Get your fingers out. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's so good. Who's he good to? To me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Yes, he does. Answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. One more time, God is good. I want you to point to yourself. God is so good. God is so good. God is so so good to me. Amen. He's a personal God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's my God. Is He your God? Is He your God? Let's pray. Father, thank You so